Welcome back to Prep Recruiting Inside of PRI. I'm your host for PRI, Rick Gailey, and we're here at NOLA Motorsports Park in Avondale, in the event center, the best place for your next big event. Along with our re recruiting insider, Renee Nato, we are pleased to have with us the Riverside Academy Rebels and Coach Chris Lashney, defensive coordinator yes, sir. for the Rebels. Thank you for joining us today, Chris. Thank you very much for having us. Chris, been there four years. You guys are on a string of 10 wins right now, but it seems like they lit a fuse following that 29 to 28 loss to Eric. Had to be a tough pill to swallow. What happened to that team, this team, since that point? Well, I don't know if there's a, some kind of fuse that was lit as much as it was just kind of a coming back down to earth and kind of reevaluating the things that you do well and, and kind of going back to uh, working on the things that you don't do well. You know, you, you, we, we've won a lot of games in the last couple of years, and sometimes you have a tendency to, to kind of overlook some of the things that you used to make a big deal out of um, when you were trying to win those games. And uh, if anything, I don't know if it was a, uh, you know, a good thing for us. I don't know if a loss is ever a good thing. Uh, I know sometimes people try to spin it that way. But uh, for us, I mean, first of all, let's not, let's not you know, forget the fact that John Errett is a very, very good football mm -hmm. team, a very, very talented football team. But uh, it really made us kind of get back to doing what we do best and, and kind of making the things that used to be important, important again to us. And you've been on the defensive side of the ball uh, most of your career. That's that's yes, sir. that's been your interest. And every year it seems that there's new and new challenges defensively. Yeah. Uh, talk about your philosophy of defense, especially in your district, that so many terrific teams came sure. out of with a, a big, varied array of offensive challenges that you face. You know, a, a, a really good football coach once told me, and a guy that I worked under um, a long time ago told me that you got to find a way to make everything the same and and you can you can see all the different variations of schemes that people are running at you personnel wise and schematically and things like that but you have to find a common denominator that brings it all together that way you're not reinventing yourself every week you're just reapplying yourself you're reapplying the same schemes you're reapplying the same rules of your defense over and over and over again and just you're just finding different ways to 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 present it to your kids so you're not you know we don't really think about it as we're facing different things we're just um, enforcing our same rules a few different ways if that makes sense you've been at Pope John Paul you've been at Brother Martin four years at, uh, at Riverside what makes this team special uh, on, a, on a path to the dome you're a couple of you know, games away now, getting there, and of course this week is very important, but what makes this team special in your eyes that this is a team that uh, you thought would be where they are? Well, I don't know if we thought anything going in. I mean, I know everybody dreams about, you know, going to the Superdome and winning a state championship and all that stuff like that, but this team, if they are special, they've been special in their ability to take one game at a time. And, uh, you know, with the pre-district schedule that we played, we didn't have a, a chance to look ahead at all. I mean, you know, talking about jumping out of the pot into the fire, I mean, it was like that every single week. And, uh, you know, it, this, this team has really been good at taking one game at a time, making, having the ability to make the things important that really are important and not worrying about all the other stuff, all the noise, we call it. Um, and then, you know, Obviously, this week is going to be our biggest test of that. And your head coach is Coach Bill Stubbs, somebody who uh, we all know uh, very well. Yep. Uh, first of all, I mean this somewhat humorously, do you work for Billy or do you work with him? <laughs> well, look, there's, there's one person in charge of that building, yeah, and there's no doubt who it is. You know, But look, we wouldn't have it any other way. He's, we wouldn't be who we are without him. I mean, his personality and his fingerprints are all over our program, and um, you know, he's been awesome to work for. There's no question that, uh, that, that he is in charge, but he also lets you do your job. He certainly does. He's, <laughs> the, he's the best boss in the world because just of what you just said just now, he, uh, you know, it, it, he, has, he has learned, I guess, throughout his, his career and his years to, to surround himself with people that he trusts and he lets them go to work. But at the end of the day, you know, our personality is dictated by him. Underlying is very important though. 
been out there a few times, broadcast a couple of games, uh, especially this year and previous, the support and the fan base at Riverside is a little special. It's a little different. Yes, it's it is. It's a little is. different. It's a different place out there. You know well, being out there in the River Parish, is, it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's a great, I mean, as a, as if, if you're a football coach, why would you not want to work at Riverside? I mean, it's just a blessing to have the support that we have from our community, great kids, uh, great people to work with. Uh, expectations are high all the time. And, you know, you can either choose to look at that as a reason to feel pressure or, or a reason to love your job. And, and we, I, I choose to look at it as a reason to love my job. And you have a very special challenge this week sure. playing uh, St. Charles Catholic, Coach Frank Monica, who we know uh, very well. Uh, after you're kind of having to go back through the district again, you had Newman yeah. last week in their spread attack, and now you've got uh, Coach Monica with, uh, with a, a more of a pro type of attack, a multiple offense. Talk about the challenges that you have, number one playing St. Charles, but in a rematch as well. Well, it's always tough, you know, to play somebody twice, they say, and, and, and I think it is tough to play somebody twice, but it's not because of anything that has to do with the players. It's, it's about us coaches can get in the way sometimes, that second time around. You know, if you look at it from a standpoint of if you had success the first time, you know, why would you change anything the second time? But then also it's in the back of your mind that, well, what are they going to do to negate what you did to be successful the first time? So what's going to be my next move? So, again, at the end of the day, it, we, can't, we can't turn it. You know, we talk about it all the time. This isn't, this isn't chess. It's checkers. You know, it's a simple game uh, that coaches – have a tendency to get in the way of sometimes, and uh, we're certainly trying not to do that. We're trying to make it, make the game decided by the players on the field, and not cloud them with a bunch of what ifs and, and this, that, and the other. It's just look, let's line up, let's play fast and physical, and let's get after them. Last minute or so, Chris, uh, you've had quarterback Jordan Loving go down. It was the next man up, and this team was evidenced by. Uh, the train didn't stop moving, That's right. but it was the next man up. Yeah, um, I think that goes into what I talked about before, and just it's just one day at a time, one play at a time, one one everything at a time. I mean, we don't, you know, I, I believe that you know, I could go down, and, and the train the train would still keep the defense would call itself. It's just that's just the way it is. I mean, we don't have, we don't feel sorry for ourselves. We don't think about our circumstances and woe is me and all that stuff. It's just, what's, the, what's next? That's all we want to do. What's next? And we've been fortunate to win a lot of games, but even if we hadn't, it would have still been what's next. I mean, that's just, that's just what we do. That's just, that's just who we are. We don't let our circumstances dictate our effort. You just want to make sure when you go down, Chris, it's not in front of the train. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The train yeah, is so. not going to That's slow right. down uh, for anybody. That's Coach Chris Lashney of the Riverside Rebels defensive coordinator. Big, big game this week, a semifinal game. Yes, one, uh, one week away from the opportunity to go to the Dome in a rematch against the St. Charles Catholic Comets. And when we come back after this break, Coach Lashney's brought several of his players here that we're going to meet and find out why Riverside is so good. This is Prep Recruiting Inside a PRI here at Nola Motorsports Park in Avondale. Riverside Rebels coming up next.